Hello, my juicy co-creators. Lilou here. I'm I'm in delicious, beautiful France, in Lyon, with Ernesto. Hello, how are you doing? I am wonderful. Thank you so much, Lilou. It's great meeting you. It was wonderful to hear you speak yesterday and, and do this beautiful meditation and the Congress here organized by Oasis Voyage, which is like this French travel agency, I guess, all about consciousness and spirituality. And, mm -hmm. and they brought you here. You flew from Miami or India because you were in India? Yeah, I was in India for five weeks and then I came from India to here mm. for this Congress, yeah. So we're going to speak about very delicious, important things. We're going to speak of the Akashic Records and the, and the shamanism and the healing that takes place. And I just love those topics. And I know that more and more beautiful co-creators out there are really interested about those topics and consciousness. How do you feel about what's happening in the world? I think it's, uh, I have witnessed a wonderful explosion of, uh, of the desire of people to deeply connect to themselves. I think that most people are tired of the materialism and consumerism that has uh, prevailed in our societies for a long, long time. And many people are moving towards uh, shamanism or wanting to know that because it connects us to our, our ancestral roots and we are going back to basics in many ways. Mm -hmm. And I feel wonderful. I think that uh, it is a wonderful evolution that the planet is uh, and the people of this planet are going through to discover themselves, to discover their true uh, and unique nature, which is something that we had lost because of uh, what society has given us in the past. Mm. So I think that we are uh, rewriting the future. We have... Um, enter a brand new cycle of 26,000 years. You know, December 20, 21st, 2012 marked the end of one cycle, but it's just the beginning of another one. And we are in the predicted age of Kali Yuga. And, uh, Kali Yuga, tell us. Kali, Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga. And uh, most uh, religions and sacred scriptures from around the world uh, have talked about uh, the 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 coming of the Christ and the coming of the Maitreya and the and the coming of the the wise teachers that are going to save the world. I think that we are the ones that we have been waiting for. And we are the elders. I mean, just think about it. You How know. Do you know that? Is that linked to the Akashic Records? Is that linked to a certain knowing that you got? Or it's a feeling? It's an intuition? Because a lot of us feel this way. Yeah. We feel like we're starting to really wake up Absolutely. to this. Absolutely. I think there is that, that, that the waking up of the consciousness of people is right there. I do get a lot of my insight and information from the Akashic Records, which is to me uh, the most powerful tool that I possess. Uh, I did not start my spiritual path or life 10 or 20 years ago. Uh, when I was six years old, I was conscious and aware that I was living a spiritual life. And that has been just the way it's been for me. So out of everything that I have learned, wonderful, world-renowned teachers, as well as little shamans, medicine men and women from around the world or my la native land of Mexico, uh, that, uh, that I have learned so much uh, from, uh, the, the 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 bottom line of of all that that I have learned is that the most important thing is to have a tool and for me it is the Akashic Records that can help me to deeply deeply look at myself look at the past look at what I have created look at the condition of my mind because my entire our entire reality our entire existence is based on the condition of our mind and that is what we're beginning to explore in a very deep way. You mean that behind every, behind the, we see a certain reality according to our past, according to the conditioning that we had, but we could be living something completely different. Is we, we don't create our reality. Yeah, we don't see a different reality. We create a reality. Everything that we have in our lives right now. Absolutely everything is created by the condition of our mind. Mm -hmm. so, and the condition of our mind, unfortunately, has been trained to take us to the past mm -hmm. and not so much to be in the present, 
even though we talk about a thing around us or someone way back 20, 30 years ago said, you know, be here now. Well, what does that mean, be here now for most people? And uh, most people think about that, but then again, the condition of their mind takes them to the past. So by being truly in the present, we can, uh, and examining or knowing the condition of our mind, uh, we cannot get uh, rid of the of the blockages, the the patterns that have been not only self-imposed but imposed by our family dynamics and and our family dynamics. We our parents, uh, many of us, uh, struggle with the childhood that we had or the parents that we had, and we have to realize that they they have done that they did or they are doing that the, the best that they can based on what their parents did our grandparents and many of those are coming from the the era the time of the depression and lack and struggle and uh, and we have carried the imprint of that to the present time but the message is that there is no need to struggle anymore mm-hmm. There is no need to, to, to grow with pain or to discomfort that we have the opportunity to enter this new age with a new consciousness that is free and clear from the struggle of the past. So as long as we change the condition of our mind and we have a tool that can help us to do that exploration, and there are many tools, but for me, the most powerful tool out of everything that I have learned is the Akashic Records, because the Akashic Records give me the opportunity to, to be deeply connected with spirit, which is what most people want, to have that intimate and deep connection with spirit. Well, I have that, and I've been teaching the Akashic Records for close to 20 years. And uh, Explain us how it works. How, where are they? How do we connect with them? How, do you, how does it work? Bring us to this world of the Akashic Records. Well, the Akashic Records are known in all sacred scriptures with different uh, names uh, in the Christian Catholic uh, tradition, which is what most people are familiar with, is mentioned in the Bible, in the Book of Revelations, as your book of life. So basically, uh, the imprints of all the actions, all the the thoughts that that we even have in this lifetime are recorded into this personal book of life and the masters and teachers the lords of akasha they keep track they keep a record of that progression of our soul from the time of its inception to the present uh, akasha is a sanskrit word that means primary substance so we are talking about that primary substance of the self so the akashic records are past the past and the present and the possibility of the unfoldment of future events so the akashic records brings us to the present moment in order to examine the past to look at the conditions that we have created in the present and then make the right choices so we can move into the future do you get that information right away i guess it's the time and space doesn't exist when you look at them how does the information present itself is it a question that you have and you get an answer is that just the the right information right away comes is there a prayer accompanied by that right there is a in today's world, there's a number of people out there teaching uh, Akashic Records, many through different psychic meditations, etc. Uh, the way that I teach Akashic Records is using a sacred prayer that was given to us or handed down to us from the Mayan tradition. Again, the Mayans, you know, taking a very important role in everyone's lives. So this sacred prayer basically opens a portal of energy so we can have a direct link between the masters and teachers, the lords of Akasha and ourselves. And once we are now connected to this energy, then we have the opportunity to dialogue with the masters and ask questions. And the art of questioning is really one of the most important things to learn when we start investigating ourselves. Because what that does is takes us from the present moment or any condition that we have created, any pattern of addiction or codependency, pains, including mental, emotional, physical, or spiritual as well. Mm -hmm. The Akashic Records, or through the art of question, we can go back to the root cause. And that root cause is really the most important because that is the imprint that created the condition. And in many cases, that can either be in this lifetime, from family dynamics, etc., or an imprint from a previous life. 
and we had the opportunity through the Akashic Records and the Art of Questioning to go back and explore this, get to the root, uh, the root cause, and then clear it. Once it's clear, then we're free. And once we're free of that, is uh, imagine that, uh, that 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 the issue is taking a certain amount of weight in our psyche, in our consciousness. And once that weight is removed, mm -hmm. then we have that empty space, so we can fill it with something else. Mm -hmm. And that something else is that what can takes what can takes us to the future, based in the choices that we're making today. Mm -hmm. I have a question regarding the clearing of those Akashic records because some teacher, um, some people in the world, there's maybe a bit of confusion and I want to hear from you uh, because when there's the clearing of some, some teachers say they claim that they can just clear the Akashic record. Isn't there a work to do with the person that is also concerned? I mean, uh, that which the Akashic records are like if you were to do some clearing, I would need to be also in the experience and, and, and agree or the teacher can simply just clear that without, you know, this co-creation. How, how, does, how does the clearing of one experience happen? Is that through a particular re-experiencing it or can it be just done by, the, by, by saying, yes, I want to clear that and then you do it? It, it takes a lot more than that. You know, a lot of I, people... I want to clear that because some people, yeah. there's really a business of the Akashic oh, records that I would like yeah. to speak to you about yeah. so so tell us what's what's really needed in that process i think that the participation of the individual is essential mm -hmm. i mean i cannot clear your akashic records i just can't you know it's like saying i am going to clear your karma i'm going to clear your history and i think that that is there for our personal growth that is there for us to understand and to learn about ourselves so i personally don't believe i have never received the message from the uh, the akashic workers that you know go to person a or person b and through uh, you they can spending five thousand dollars it's clear <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> it's gonna cost you this much money and i will clear it but it's gonna take two sessions <laughs> So that's 10 grand. No, that is definitely not the case. I think that everyone, what I do is I provide the tools. I provide the means, uh, which is what, uh, what every great teacher has done for us. Just look at, uh, at the work of, of the Dalai Lama in today's world or, or anyone like that. He doesn't do the work for you. You know, the great teachers from the past, Padma Sambhava, any of them, they don't do the work for you. They simply give you the tools. They give you the teaching for you to do the work. If you create the karma, you create the initial imprint of that karma. So we have to take the time, pay our dues, so to speak, to go and clear that. And it is not difficult it's really not difficult. It's just a matter of following a, a recipe, mm -hmm. you know, and following a system that ca can be taught by someone that is that is honest, that is not interested in the gain of the $5,000, you know, by me doing this thing, you know, and I clear your records because uh, it, it is a personal work that, that we all need to do. Mm -hmm. No, I, I often um, I, I like to also you know bring that kind of level of of transparency and authenticity because I think it's super needed in, in the spiritual world. There is some confusion, and we have to listen to our heart to welcome the right teacher. And when we're ready to clear those akashic records, the right person will come. It's not something to be forced on. It's there's some there's the right person that will show Correct. up. And there's a lot of people, you know, a spirituality. Uh, you know, 25 years ago when I was teaching. Uh, shamanism or something else there was just a handful of people interested in this if i went to a bookstore in the u.s or canada the the spiritual section was small like that and now it's just a booming business all over so uh, there's a lot of people that say okay well that's a good business a good way to make money and i can just uh, you know dress the part and act the part and i can make a lot of money and to me that is not what it's all about i truly believe that spirit uh, provides for me, has provided since day one, and it will continue providing. Uh, but there is a lot of people out there that uh, that are selling a spirituality, and we have to to open our hearts to really allow the language of the heart and the thought process of the heart, and not so much of the mind, to be the one that says, "Do I feel the honesty?" And, and, and from this teacher, male, female, makes no difference. Do I feel that they really uh, want to give me something that is gonna that is for my highest good, or 
Uh, I just heard uh, during this conference a couple of days ago that there was someone uh, basically selling the Akashic Records uh, to this individual, but the, that it was going to take a minimum of four sessions for them to be able to uh, to learn the, the process so they could access the Akashic Records for themselves. And each session or each time that they spend with this particular teacher, which I don't know who or she, he or, or she is, uh, we're charging precisely $5,000 a pop. So, you know, we're talking about $20,000. To me, that is just not honest. It's just not honest. Uh, so, uh, Interesting that we brought this here now, and it's, it's important to mention those, not to go into fear about it, but really to listen, to do the work that is needed to follow our intuition. Yeah. And in our heart, and, and and if we're fearful, then it's not the right moment. Because if there is, sometimes there's fear linked to that, and you know the pressure and the yeah. I th I think that most people, you know, I have been doing this work for forty years or something, and there's a lot of people that say yes, I am willing to know about myself, and they go to a seminar. I can only talk about my seminars. They come to my seminars and they say yes, I'm here. I'm ready to do the work. I am. I am open. I will be able to to do the the work, but you know we are we're like a people talk about like we're we're like an onion and we peel mm -hmm. layers. I don't think we're like an onion at all. Uh, onions make me cry, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't like to cry. Uh -huh. uh, I think that we are more like an artichoke, uh -huh. okay, and and we have that outer layer of protection in the artichoke, and we start peeling. Mm -hmm. But what happens is that once the outer layer, which is our protection, gets peeled and we start getting into the juicy mm. part or the soft part of the artichoke is when we start really seeing our true nature. We can start seeing the pains, the wounds from the past. We start seeing uh, the interaction of other individuals and the karma that we have taken on from the imprint of other individuals in our lives. And... Many times, you know, it's scary. So people run away. You know, people shut down and they say, that's enough. You know, no, no, I don't need any more. And they, they pretend that they continue a spiritual path, but they keep it superficial. I think that someone that really wants to, to, to know, you know, uh, that all say, know thyself, which is ancient, right? Uh, someone that, re that really wants to know him or herself, they have to pay their dues and, and take the time to do this self-exploration. And to me, self-exploration is a beautiful path of self-discovery, a path that leads you to, to the understanding of what is the what is really in your heart uh, that's why i call my company you know my company's name is journey to the heart mm -hmm. because that is the journey is the journey to the heart and what is even more interesting uh, this happened to me five years ago i was in my akashic records and the master said to me okay ernesto you are now ready to explore the back of the heart and when they said that to me it's like Wow, the back of the heart. You know, I have always thought about, and I've done hundreds, maybe thousands of meditations that are heart center, but I have never. A special had. place. We've heard of the special place in the heart huh? that is locked in, that is, how do you call it? Well, the, the Shanti Ishta in Lakota is the eye or the center of the heart. But what they talked about is, what, yeah, what, and I said, well, what do you mean the back of the heart? And they say, imagine or look at the moon. And you always see one face of the moon, but in order to see the back side of the moon, you have to take a, a spacecraft, a rocket ship, whatever, and go behind it and then explore from behind. So when they said... Wow! Yeah, when they said that to me, I just went, whoa. So I went to this deep meditation and I imagined that I was just going behind mm. my heart and then I look at my heart from behind mm. and the revelations and the work that I have done first, you know, with myself, mm has been just tremendous to see how I have taken material that is like the, imagine that the back heart side of the heart is like the basement or the attic where you just uh, start shoving things back there, back there, back there for years and years and years. And you have the front of the house nice and clean, but the attic, what is in the back, mm -hmm. is completely cluttered, full of uh, spider webs and whatever. So this was a beautiful message. And I have asked the question, 
to hundreds of people uh, during my classes in this past few years. How many of you have gone to explore the backside of the heart? And everybody goes, what? So, so that is part of what I am teaching right now is the exploration of what is behind the heart because that is the only way if we clear and clean the totality of that of that artichoke if we continue doing the work little by little we start peeling more and more of the leaves of the artichoke to get to the most important part which is the heart but once we think we're there and we see that heart is just right there can we eat it and enjoy it not yet because it's covered with all those little tiny spiny thorny things that we have to carefully remove and once we do that is when we can take that first bite of that juicy mm -hmm. center of the artichoke and then we discover ourselves right there beautiful well i would love to end this conversation this part now and that we we're going to do a part a, a second part and start with this conversation of the heart and the back and then go into all kind of other beautiful things my juicy co-creators i hope you have enjoyed this video i really encourage you to share it share it share it thanks to the internet it really goes all around the world it's beautiful thank you ernesto for this beautiful much lou it's my pleasure thank you to all the delicious co-creators out there much much love bye bye